Hello students, welcome to the lecture on petrochemical industry and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the nature of the petrochemical industry, discuss on planning of an integrated petrochemical complex, explain the energy use and the chemical industry. Let's start with the concept of petrochemical industry. The petrochemical industry is among the most important and dynamic sectors of an industrial economy. The manufacturer of petrochemicals, which absorbs only about five of the world's oil supplies, is nevertheless important for two chief reasons. Firstly, because of its linkages with other industries both backward into petroleum refining, its basic input is naphtha, a byproduct of petroleum refining, and more importantly, because of its forward linkages into a multitude of downstream products such as synthetic fibers, synthetic rubber, plastic fertilizer, paints, and a synthetic detergents. Such an enveloping industry can give an impetus to all round industrial development. Secondly, the petrochemical industry has gained ground as a producer of substitute for natural products made from fast depleting resources such as wood, metal, etc. Offer products that cannot keep pace with demand, example wool, cotton, silk, soap, etc. This ensures that the consumption basket can keep expanding despite the depletion of natural resources. In fact, in the West, the impetus for the industry came in the 1940s from the need to provide man-made substitute for a variety of natural goods that were in a short supply during the war period. In less developed countries, LDCs, the petrochemical industry has gained ground where the value-added component derived from indigenous hydrocarbon sources is large, entailing in higher returns and higher domestic value added. But in LCDs, the reservoirs of petroleum and natural gases, the industry has had a late start. In India, as in most LDCs, the government has played a major role in shaping the structure of the petrochemical industry. Initially, the sector was totally protected from foreign competition and domestic firms were heavily regulated. Based on the rationale of infant industry protection, the government shielded the nascent domestic industry from import competition with protection policies such as high tariff rates, quota restriction apart from an outright ban on the import of certain products. In the domestic petrochemical industry, the government owned a considerable share through public sector investment and regulated private companies. The public sector had a monopoly in the manufacture of feedstocks and dominated the production of intermediate petrochemicals. Private companies were predominant in downstream petrochemicals. Regulation consisted of the licensing of the entry of new firms, the capacity expansion of incumbent firms. Licensing was restricted by domestic demand and involved in the parceling of the domestic market among firms. The result was a highly concentrated and oligopolistic industrial structure. With liberalization, the government has sought to increase competition in the industry. The impact of these policies can be examined through an analysis of the industry structure. The structure of an industry is determined by the configuration of firms in that industry and the individual or collective market power. According to traditional industrial organization taxonomy, the petrochemical industry is a homogeneous oligopoly. An oligopoly because increasing returns to scale and consequently high scales of operation and high cost of investments result in concentration which is a competition limiting factor. A priori scaled economies and consequently increasing returns to scale and associated with large plant sizes. Today, much of the world around us is made from petrochemicals. That is just about everything not made from plants, rocks or metal. Petrochemical products include thousands of essential and life-saving products people use every day. And yes, football fans, that includes the bleachers you sit on the artificial surface on the field, the lacing in the football, and the uniforms worn by the players. But what are petrochemicals? Well, it all begins very small with the carbon atom, which is the magic behind organic chemistry. Carbon can take different forms, from coal to diamonds to nanotubes. Carbon is truly magical in that it can connect to many different types of atoms, including itself. When it connects, 
it becomes a molecule, which is nothing more than a group of connected atoms. When carbon connects to itself, and you add a few hydrogens, you get what is called a hydrocarbon molecule. Here is what some of the hydrocarbon molecules look like. They each have similar properties, but are still very different from each other. Hydrocarbons are found in oil and natural gas, which are naturally occurring mixtures formed from decayed plants and animals. Natural gas can exist as both a gas and a liquid under the ground. The gas is comprised mostly of methane and the liquid is a mixture of ethane, propane and butane. Some of the natural gas and liquids have been trapped in shale formations. Shale is a type of dense rock. But how do we get it out? We drill. This is the traditional way to drill for natural gas and natural gas liquids. But what about the shale formations far below? Exploration crews can now use a combination of high-tech approaches to get the gas and liquids from the shale rock. This is done through a combination of horizontal drilling, hydraulic fracturing and seismic imaging. After they drill down, the exploration crews can drill horizontally. Equipped with sophisticated drilling equipment, the crews shoot down a mixture of water, sand and detergents to crack the rock so that the gas and liquids can escape. The fracturing process takes place thousands of feet below water reservoirs or aquifers. Wherever the drill and pipe pass through a freshwater layer, the water is protected by several impermeable barriers that are made of steel and concrete casings. These barriers ensure maximum protection for water supplies. Once the natural gas liquids are out of the ground, they are separated into the gases ethane, propane and butane. Of the three, Ethane is a very important hydrocarbon molecule. Ethane is fed into a large, complex piece of manufacturing equipment called a cracker. It's called that because it uses high temperatures to crack the bond between carbons. Now, the chemistry takes over. Chemistry is all about bonding. The cracker then forces the carbons to form two bonds with each other that make a new hydrocarbon molecule called ethylene. As one of the most fundamental building blocks in the world of plastics and chemistry, ethylene is special. What makes ethylene special is the double bond between the carbons. This is what an ethane cracker looks like. Ethane comes into the unit by pipeline. Now we apply heat to break the carbon bond. Here you see where the ethylene exits the cracker through another pipeline. From here, ethylene can take two different routes. It can be made into plastic or other chemicals called petrochemical derivatives. They are used as raw materials to make specialty chemicals, which give us products with many performance attributes that consumers enjoy. For example, they make nylon stronger, so it can be used by our armed forces for parachute straps. Or it can be used in a variety of plastic that have characteristics that make them stronger, more flexible and resilient. You saw what a football game would look like without petrochemicals. Now let's see what your life is like with petrochemicals. It's safe to say that from the moment you wake up each morning to the time you go to bed each night, you rely on products made from ethylene and other petrochemicals. Petrochemicals may have been used to make the bedspread on your bed, the carpeting on the floor, the paint on the walls, and the curtains on the windows. They're in many of the materials that go into making your home comfortable and efficient including foam insulation in walls and attic, vinyl siding, eaves and windows, solar shingles and a number of deck materials. Even when you go for a drive, know that petrochemicals are making your ride more comfortable. Interestingly, today's windmills wouldn't exist without petroleum-based petrochemicals. But petrochemicals applications go beyond our comfort and entertainment. They are critical to our lives. Modern medicine would be nearly impossible without the many products made from petrochemicals. These include critical devices for surgical procedures, bags that keep blood fresher longer, sterile tubing to deliver life-saving blood in medicine. Everything from the stethoscope to the blood pressure monitor to aspirin is made from petrochemicals. Petrochemicals are also the building blocks for prosthetic and other devices that replace parts of the human body damaged or destroyed by disease, age, or injury. Among petrochemicals, many attributes is the fact that they are also very versatile. Chemists can actually manipulate groups of atoms 
and make the resulting products perform in special and unique ways, allowing them to be used to make everything from toys to eyewear to bulletproof vests. They make modern communications possible. In fact, regardless of how you're viewing this video, on a desktop computer, laptop, tablet, or smartphone, the viewing device is made from petrochemicals. The future of specialized materials is only limited by our imagination. Breakthroughs are happening every day in electronics, transportation, military applications, and emergency services. None of this would be possible without the world of organic chemistry and petrochemicals. Let us now discuss the nature of the petrochemical industry. There are significant difficulties to define the boundaries of the petrochemical industry because of the complexity of its operation and the diversity of its product. So far, the broadest definition of the industry is in terms of its raw material basis. Thus, petrochemicals are those chemicals that are manufactured from feedstock and are obtained from oil or natural gas. The complexity of the petrochemical industry is illustrated by the fact that the definition covers products as varied as basic petrochemicals, intermediate products manufactured by combining basic products and or by making these to react with other chemical compounds and finished products. The precise terminology of finished products varies from one set of natural statistics to another. The petrochemicals generally include plastic, resins, synthetic fibers and organic chemicals. The operation of the industry typically involves linked and sequential processes. The manufacture of basic petrochemicals is the first stage in the conversion. Generally speaking, basic petrochemicals and intermediates are associated with transactions that are internal to the industry, whilst finished petrochemicals products usually are integral parts of other industrial sectors. Even though the range of products is vast, the total volume of output is dominated by relatively few of them. Well, over half of the total output by weight of the world petrochemical industry is in the form of plastic and resins, and this broad group together with synthetic fibers and synthetic rubbers accounts for more than three quarters. The petrochemical industry embraces numerous activities with highly complex interrelationship. At the upstream end, it obtains its feedstock from the natural gas and oil refining industries. However, the distinction between the petrochemical industry and the other sectors at the downstream end of the processing chain is not always clear. At the upstream end, petrochemical activities are often integrated with oil refining at one production site and the condition for the petrochemical production are directly influenced by the optimization policy for the manufacturing complex as a whole. The vertical Integration therefore includes refining operation and basic petrochemical production. As a result of that, a large share of the trade between the two sectors is a captive trade, influenced in various ways by the overall strategy of the manufacturing complex. Therefore, the team petrochemical industry in our study includes the refining sector as well. Industrial structure Two interlinked factors have molded the growth and development of the petrochemical industry in India. These are the nature and form of government intervention, the structure of the industry. Government intervention includes its regulatory role as well as its role as a producer of petrochemicals in the public sector. The structure of the industry rests largely on government policy, intrinsic characteristic of the industry, firm strategies. While government intervention in the restricted regime wrought several artificial entry barriers both to regulate capacity built up and expansion in the domestic industry and to regulate trade, especially imports. In the liberalization era, these artificial barriers have been brought down in two ways. Number A, by domestic liberalization policies which have de-licensed industries and have facilitated the entry of new firms as well as capacity expansions of incumbent firms and subscribe minimum economic sales of operation and number b trade liberalization which has meant the gradual lowering of tariff barriers in order to examine the implications of these liberal policies on the structure of the industry one has to take into account the intrinsic characteristic of the petrochemical industry the most significant characteristic of the petrochemical industry is that of increasing returns to scale. This directs that optimal firms be large, which in turn implies high investment costs of both entry and expansion. When optimal plant sizes are large, especially when compared to demand in a still restricted domestic market, there is a tendency for a build-up of a concentrated market. 
a concentrated market and impede competition as well as entry. The onslaught of liberal industry policy, especially relicensing and the specification of MES, MES is large compared to the average installed capacity of domestic firms and non-international plant sizes, has the following implications for firm behavior or strategies. And when firms must build large MES capacities and build integrated complexes, incumbent firms expand to WES at least and create capacities in elite products and thereby integrate vertically. Therefore, government intervention and the removal of artificial entry barriers shape firm behavior in a concentrated market. Structure determinants The petrochemical industry, the supply of intermediate inputs to end-use manufacturers, is a homogeneous oligopoly. The classification is determined by the significance of product differentiation, scale and concentration in an industry. In the petrochemical industry, there are no brand names and therefore product differentiation in the conventional use of the term does not exist. That leaves a scale and concentration as the most significant determinants of industrial or market structure in the petrochemical industry. The petrochemical industry has high cost of investment and is one of increasing returns where economies of scale play a significant role. This ensures that firms are large and subject to demand condition, limit the extent of competitions possible in an industry. Empirical work in industrial organization is replete with examples of collusive oligopolies where firms charge high prices and obtain excess profits. The structure of the petrochemical industry is determined by examining the following characteristic of the industry. Concentration, vertical integration, scale of operation, concentration. The concentration of an industry is the extent to which a small number of firms achieve a dimension of economic power in an industry. Industry concentration is an important determinant of the nature of competition in an industry. Perfect competition is one extreme where firms are small in number in relation to the size of the total market, so they cannot influence prices individually. In this case, concentration is low. The other extreme is a monopoly where there is a single seller and concentration is obsolete. In most industries, the situation is in between. A bird's eye view of the configuration of firms in the petrochemical industry provides an indication of the extent of concentration. In an increasing returns industry, the optimal scale of operation restricts the number of firms in an industry. Consequently, firm sizes are large and there is a tendency for high concentration to build up. Vertical integration A firm is vertically integrated when two or more successive stages of production are organized within the same firm. A firm can integrate it either backwards or forwards. Backward or upstream integration occurs when the firm begins to manufacture an input into its original product. Forward or downstream integration involves using the firm's output to make a more finished product than earlier. The inherent advantages of vertical integration are the elimination of contractual or market exchanges within the boundary of the firm. The petrochemical industry consists of a series of consecutive but separate production processes, the manufacture of feedstock at one end, the production of final petrochemicals or products which are then used for manufacturing consumption goods at the other end. A firm located at any point on this production process may choose to integrate backwards or forwards. Scale of operation. One of the components of the liberal industrial policy of the government of India has specified the minimum economic scale for a range of petrochemicals products. These figures are prescribed minimum scales. A firm is free to expand beyond this limit. This is more so when demand constraints are a limiting factor. While the petrochemical industry was still licensed, the government stipulated a minimum economic scale of operation to allow firms to operate at optimal scales. While an HES policy becomes redundant after relicensing, firms will still have to operate at optimal levels since efficiency in the petrochemical industry is linked to scale of operation. Most of the firms will have to expand in order to operate at optimum levels. In a situation where economies of scale are significant, demand constraints become limiting factor for the expansion of firms. When economies of scale are high, firm sizes are large. Barriers to entry The nature of competition in industry is dependent upon the extent and nature of entry barriers present in the industry presents the entire range of entry barriers that was present in the Indian petrochemical industry in the pre-liberalization period as well as the barriers that are likely to arise after liberalization.
The barriers that are inherent to the industry are of course present in both periods. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the planning of an integrated petrochemical complex. Operating planning for an integrated petrochemical site is a fairly complex and challenging problem. The manufacturing process typically starts with a plan with the flexibility of processing various qualities of feedstock, which provides a raw material for downstream plants that produce different products. Supply chain management in the petrochemical manufacturing industry is normally being performed either as a handmade tox using spread sheets or with different planning and scheduling commercial systems. These packages usually have some lack of functionality that comes from the limitations of solution methods used and from the incapability of providing a full integration between the planning and the scheduling levels. In this work, we solve the supply chain planning problem of a sector of a petrochemical complex using a new tool. The package SC Mart, this new tool uses state of the art solvers for linear programming and mixed integral non linear programming problems. Supply chain people are currently faced to several planning and or scheduling problems that must be solved every day, week, month or quarter. Some typical problems are ethane taking optimization, production plan, export or import operation or product demand, satisfaction. SC Mart suit for planning and scheduling is a robust tool that can solve of these types of problems and support this business decision. It is based on an advanced optimization technology and a database-centric system architecture which provides a flexible data management. Users can generate their own models under the friendly graphical interface. SC Mark Modeler where each unit operation is represented by a tux which has its own variables and parameters. SC Mark Modeler has incorporated many useful tux as reactors, splitters, mixers, demands, and suppliers. When the model design is finished, it is possible to generate multi-period case studies that allow the user to optimize the entire supply chain from operation condition to managing inventories. After running the optimization, an optimal solution is reached and the result can be browsed using a flexible interface. Process description. It consists of a petrochemical complex with two ethane fractionators, two ethylene plants and five ethylene consumers. Each fractionator is connected through a pipeline to both ethylene plants and then they can feed one or both of them simultaneously. Two ethane storage tanks are available to cover lack of raw materials from the fractionators along the year. The ethylene plants consist of ethane cracking and acetylene reactors and a cold product separation area that provides ethane propane, propylene and butane recycles to the crackers. In the cold, there is separation towers from which the ethylene is obtained. Let's now talk about energy use and the chemical industry. The business of chemistry transforms natural raw materials from earth, water and air into valuable products that enable safer and healthier lifestyles. Chemistry unlocks nature's potential to improve the quality of life for a growing and a prospering world population by creating materials used in a multitude of consumer, industrial and construction applications. The transformation of simple compounds into valuable and useful materials requires large amounts of energy. The business of chemistry is energy intensive. This is especially the case for basic chemicals as well as certain specialty chemical segments, example industrial gases. The largest user of energy is the petrochemical and downstream chemical derivatives business. Inorganic chemicals and agriculture chemicals also are energy intensive. Illustrate the ethylene supply chain from ethane feedstock through petrochemical intermediates and final end use products. Unique among manufacturers, the business of chemistry relies upon energy input, not only as fuel and power for its operation, but also as raw materials in the manufacture of many of its products. For example, oil and natural gas are raw materials, term feedstocks, for the manufacture of organic chemicals. Petroleum and natural gas contain hydrocarbon molecules that are split apart during processing and then recombined into useful chemistry products. Feedstock use is concentrated in bulk petrochemicals and fertilizer. There are several methods of separating or cracking the large hydrocarbon chains found in fossil fuels, natural gas and petroleum. Natural gas is processed to produce methane and natural gas liquids NGLs that are contained in the natural gas. These natural gas liquids include ethane, propane and butane. 
and are produced mostly via natural gas processing. That is, stripping the NGLs out of the natural gas, which is mostly methane, that is shipped to consumers via pipelines. This largely occurs in the Gulf Coast region and is the major reason the U.S. petrochemicals industry developed in that region. Ethane is a saturated C2 light hydrocarbon, a colorless and odorless gas. It is the primary raw materials used as a feedstock in the production of ethylene and competes with other stream cracker feedstock. Propane is also used as a feedstock, but it is more widely used as a fuel. Butane is another NGL feedstock. Petroleum is refined to produce a variety of petroleum products, including naphtha and gas oil, which are the primary heavy liquid feedstock. Naphtha is a generic term for hydrocarbon mixture that distilled at a boiling range between 70 degrees Celsius and 190 degrees Celsius. The major components include normal and are paraffins, naphthenic and other aromatics. Lighter paraffinic naphtha is a preferred feedstock for steam cracking to produce ethylene, while heavier grades are preferred for gasoline manufacture. Gas oil is another distillate of petroleum. It is an important feedstock for production of metal distillate fuels, kerosene jet fuel, diesel fuel and heating oil, usually after desulfurization. Some gas oil is used as olefin feedstock. Naphtha, gas oil, ethane, propane and butane are processed in large vessels or crackers which are heated and pressurized to crack the hydrocarbon chains into smaller ones. These smaller hydrocarbons are the gaseous petrochemical feedstocks used to make the products of chemistry. In the US, petrochemical industry, the organic chemicals with the largest production volumes are methanol, ethylene, propylene, butadine, benzene, toluene, and xylem. Ethylene, propylene, and butadine are collectively known as olefins, which belong to a class of unsaturated aliphatic hydrocarbons. Olefins contain one or more double bonds which make them chemically reactive. Benzene, toluene and xylems are commonly referred to as aromatics which are unsaturated cyclic hydrocarbons containing one or more rings. Key petrochemical feedstock methane is directly converted from the methane in natural gas and does not undergo the cracking process. Methane is directly converted into methanol and ammonia. Olefins, aromatics and methanols are generally referred to as primary petrochemicals and are the chemical starting point for plastic, pharmaceuticals, electronic materials, fertilizer and thousands of other products that improve the lives of a growing population. State Intervention and Regulation The analysis of government intervention and impact on the trade and the investment flow internationally has been isolated on international trade and trade policies. The role of government decision and regulatory activities is a fairly neglected area. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. The petrochemical industry has gained ground as a producer of substitute for natural products made from fast depleting resources such as wood, metal, etc. or for products that cannot keep pace with demand. The inherent advantages of vertical integration are the elimination of contractual or market exchanges within the boundary of the firm. The manufacture of basic petrochemicals is the first stage in the conversion. The business of chemistry transforms natural raw materials from earth, water and air into valuable products that enable safer and healthier lifestyle. Liberalization policies in India have created an environment in which it is possible for firms to integrate vertically. The largest user of energy is a petrochemical and downstream chemical derivatives business.